Hello and welcome to another sketch series. Today I'm going to be doing Starfire. It's been a few days since the last one. I, I decided to do a watercolor. I bought a new sketch pad and it's a mixed media sketch pad which means it absorbs a little bit more liquid than the ones I'm used to. It should be better for markers, it should be better for pens, it should be better for watercolors all around. So I thought I would try it. And uh, after about a day or two of practice with this new pad, I decided to do one of these videos. And uh, here I have Starfire because uh, Teen Titans is a great book, a uh, great comic book. If you're not reading it, I recommend it. Uh, but overall, I, I really enjoy her design. She's very unique. Um, I don't like the over-sexualized design. I like her new design that they just launched. It's very cool, very uh, Batgirl-esque. And I really dig that. Anyway, here I'm laying down some flat pens, uh, kind of my usual routine. As for the hair, she has very weird hair. It starts off as hair and it ends as like flame in the comic book, which I think is pretty cool. So I thought I would, uh, I thought I would throw that in there and uh, do my best to try to transmit that it is hair, but it's also fire. I don't think I did a good job, but anyway, and uh, the pose is kind of generic. No, no big deal. She's just kind of flying around. You can't really see the other leg. One of them is tucked behind, uh, like touching up against her butt, and the other one is extended, but it's off screen, and you'll see it a little bit later. And uh, working with this mixed media pad, I'm enjoying doing some watercolors. Uh, so today I thought I would do a watercolor video. I'm still working on my females, on my female posture, on my female anatomy. I'm really, really bad at it, but I've been doing a lot more of it, and if you follow me on Instagram at Luke Riverplay, You'll notice that recently a lot of my drawings have all been female, just trying to practice that as much as possible and get get as good as, at that as I humanly can. Um, now, as for this video, I didn't increase the speed all that much. This is at about uh, double speed, so I usually draw a few lines, and because of the way the, the camera is set up, I, uh, I draw a few lines and then I, I have to figure out how I'm going to attack the other lines. Um, this camera is actually a new phone, and it did this weird thing where it was saving everything to a cloud, and I didn't know how to stop it from doing that. It's uh, not it's not obvious on the phone, and uh, it kept cutting the video. So you'll see parts where we jump ahead later, and it's just well, I have to figure that out. But anyway, I thought I'd go with my own design for her um, for her armor or for her suit. I like a uh, I like a little bit of the showing belly, but I also like covering her up a little bit. I'm I'm really not a fan of the over-sexualized female character. I think it's a little bit sleazy and kind of um, demeaning to men and women. Men because they have to appeal, like it appeals to them and, and people know that. So they draw it and they say, yeah, then the boys will buy it. And women because obviously it's, it's, sex, it's a sexualized thing and I don't know, it's just weird to talk about. Um, but anyway, here I'm just finishing up my simple line work, and then I'm going to jump into my thick and thins. And I'll be using my Pentel pocket brush, as usual, um, to just throw down some very thick lines around the edges, and then kind of thin out some lines where things hang over other things. For example, there's, you know, uh, maybe a flap where the shoulder is in front of a muscle on the arm, or fingers in front of the palm, that kind of stuff. Uh, even her her breast against her chest, it lays on there, so therefore it would cast a darker shadow. And I'll transmit that through a darker line, a thicker line. Um, I also like to do that with the outlines of the costume to show the difference between when the costume ends and when her skin begins. If not, it just all kind of seems like lines on her skin. And uh, I used to have a bigger problem with that just because I didn't know what to do or what to look for. But now I kind of do, so I feel better about it. So here for the hair, um, I was debating whether to thin it out as it goes back, but uh, I thought, yeah, let's just go with this and see what happens, and just kind of went from there. Um, so here we're working on the arm. It's no big deal there. Uh, again, I'm really bad at women. I really don't like the way the breasts turn out or... I feel like something's off. Maybe it's the, oh, I don't know, the back. I have no idea. I, I just have to keep practicing. Keep trying different figures. Keep trying different models. Um, keep trying different 
thumbnail sketches and see which ones work out for me and which ones don't. Um, because for men, I have an easy way of doing thumbnail sketches, which I have a video up on my channel about doing thumbnails for men. And uh, for the most part, they all turn out with relatively good posture and good um, build. But for women, I really don't have a good thumbnail method. Therefore, I just kind of have to eyeball everything. And the more you leave everything to the eyeball and to figure it out later, the more it becomes just a train wreck. All right, so here I'm going to be throwing down some watercolors. And uh, I thought I would show you the watercolors, but also... I'm going to highlight the watercolor that I'm using right now. And as you can see, it's a nice orange color. Here's where the video cuts out, and then we jump ahead to me having already done all the skin, which is really frustrating because I really wanted to show how I did that. But whatever. Now we're using the darker purple. It's all the way down there. You see that? Um, even though it kind of looks like the purple at about three from the bottom on the first row, it's not. It's the one all the way down there because when it dries, it actually dries lighter than it looks and uh, I'll use that one later. So what I like to do is throw down a darker color as my first main tone and then I don't cover the whole body with it. I only cover like sections of it. You can kind of see there's some fading and some shading and some highlights and then I'll end up going back over those with a lighter color. This is my attempt to give it some depth, to give it some tonality and to give it some color, some hue variation and this really helps to transmit figure and not just color on flat surface. So you can kind of see me going over some of the darker bits there um, and just kind of adding some more color to the whole drawing. The thing I learned about watercolor is that the color is very diluted so you have to be careful about adding more color but not oversaturating it compared to the rest of your drawing. So it's a very interesting process. Here I'm doing the lips. I did them I think in that little green all the way at the bottom there and uh, just really quick I did the lips. And then I'm going to jump into the next color phase, which is going to be, I believe, her. Uh, we're going to go back over it with a lighter purple on her outfit. You can kind of see how it looks pink by contrast, but it's actually just the purple. And you can see that how adding that slight color change and color variation really helps give the idea that this is a rounded object, that this is a dimensional object, and that it has volume and depth. Now we're going to do the hair, and I decided to start with a nice bright, like burnt red orange, which is that one over there. Kind of see it highlighted. And I tried to do not a flat coloring, but tried to do um, lighter coloring at the tips and darker coloring behind her head. I don't know if that really came out clearly. I feel like it didn't, but whatever. Trial and error, that's how we learn. And uh, once I went over that, I let it dry between each one of these phases. There's a period where I just kind of let it dry, and then I go over it again with a different color. For example, here we're going over it with a brighter red. And uh, as it dries, it'll dry brighter, and uh, it'll give it more hue, more color, and therefore more depth and more shape. And I really like this red, and I think um, I was able to do this without refilling the brush. It's always a challenge of, oh, can I make it all the way to the end over there without refilling the brush, or will I have to? And that... If you have to, you end up having a very big change in, in the color and in the amount of color in your drawing. And now for the last phase that we're going to work on, I don't think I show it, but I colored the eyes the same green as before. Now for the last phase is the background, and it's going to be using that center beige. It'll look orange by contrast, but as it dries, you can make out, if you were to block out the whole screen and just look at that color, it's a beige color. But color is very subjective, so it really depends on what color is surrounded. Um, and since we're surrounding, since this picture of Starfire has a lot of orange and purple and red, when you throw a beige in, a beige in, a beige in, a beige in, it will look orange by contrast, and therefore it'll give everything a nice consistency. And I kind of, I kind of like that. I've been playing around a lot more with color theory and color variation, and it's very fun, very exciting. Now, clearly, I've sped this up a lot more for this part because this is obviously not the most riveting action watching me color some background. It's not exactly, you know, blockbuster material. But I really enjoy doing watercolors. They're really, really relaxing because you can't really control it and you have to let go, and I'm learning more and more about that. But, um,. 
I really, I'm mixed on how I like this drawing. So let's go over the drawing itself. Overall, I like the colors and I like the depth that I got from the shading. What I'm not a fan of in this drawing is the overall pose and my anatomy and structure of the female figure. And that is something that I'll have to continue to work on. Anyway, I hope you learned something and I hope I learned something through this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Take care.